Okay, welcome. It's the 12th of August, 2022. This is Google Summer of Code, uh, automated cache, cache maintenance for the Git plugin. Rushikesh, what questions do you have? Uh, I had questions regarding, you know, storing the files. Have you, have you, like we discussed it before, like, uh, you know, like, uh, we spoke about the metrics plugin, okay, on how we would store files, you know, regarding the Git maintenance. Uh, caches uh, and how would we then display it back i went through the metrics plugin but i didn't find any way of how they are storing it so could you help me with that and i'm not i'm not sure i i can give great help for it but let's let's look together and see what we can find i may have to take an action item to go do some research to see so so the kinds of data that you're trying to store what you're trying to store is a record of when the maintenance was run, how long it was run, or what? Tell me more about what information you're trying to store. Or uh, what what maintenance task was run? When was okay. it run? How much time did it take? Did it uh, succeed or fail? And when was it last run? You know, if that was needed. So. Yeah. Okay. So so what what we need is, and the idea is, we the user will be able to click something from the UI that tells that sh will show them a table of results where, hey, the last maintenance tasks, this this task was performed. It was working on this cache. It took this long. It ran at this time, that sort of thing. Yeah, in a table of 10 entries, and then you have this, uh, you know, page pagination. Like with, ah, you okay. Know, you do one, two, three, four, so. Right, all right. So. So how to present results and okay, so let's let's go looking for some examples and see if we can find some. I'm gonna share my screen and let's just see what we can find as possible candidates. So what you should see is a, a pretty background and now you'll see Jenkins coming. All right, so, so what we're thinking, well, so, okay, so, so let's consider what are some alternatives. One might be if we wanted to use a presentation like, well, what if we wanted to use a presentation like the way we present warnings? Let's, let's, let's grab one here from that. So in, the, in this thing probably here, oh, I know, I can even look, let's do one better. Let's look on, see a place where you can see it without without having to get access to my machine let's go to ci.jenkins.io and let's look at the platform labeler plugin or even better let's look at the git plugin and on this one what we see are some there are some historical records here right like test results code coverage results and tabular results of those things for instance we might want to look at the coverage report now this this may be more data more a different kind of data because what what i think we you need to see is something that's sort of tabular like mm -hmm. this one is where it says here's a table of types of warnings okay they wouldn't be warnings in our case but the type, the total, the new, and the distribution, right? Yeah. Okay, and so, and then, then they may want to click through and see something that tells them something more. Okay. And so, this, this, does that feel like a something like the user interface you think you might might like to use? Yeah, yeah, something like that. If you if you go back to the you know plugins, if you go, back, can you click on you know dashboard plugins there? On your uh -huh. screen. Sure. Uh, so you dashboard. Know, something like this. Yeah. So, some table like this, you know, where I have columns. Okay. Okay. And to add, you know, this table also is fine if we could add columns to it. Okay. And there are, there are certainly tables like this. For instance, I, I had submitted a pull request. Let's see if I can find the one to Jenkins core that I submitted not long ago. And it was merged actually. So let's find find that one. Let's find pull requests, author, me, 
closed. Use new layout for remote class loader stats. Okay, so this was the this was the presentation of something. And so I was changing it from what it used to look like this. And now in the new layout, it looks like this. Okay. And so that that gives us some hint. Now, how was it doing it? The change was it changed, all it did was change a, a in this case, a dot groovy file, but it could also be a dot jelly file. To say, all right, use this syntax. Yeah, so so would this now this is this is talking about presentation. Your I think question is as much about data, data pre, data storage, right? How do storage. we re remember the data? And for that, maybe we want to find something that gives us some historical information. How could we find something that gives us historical that we can use as a reference? Like, oh, oh, like build history, right? Would that that's build probably history, yes. that's that's probably very similar to what what we need to do. If we look at if I look at CI on the Git plugin, and if we look at build history, this one right here. Because this this really is showing the kind of information you're describing, right? Yeah. It's something historical, how long ago it was, did it pass or fail? And this one shows me more information about it. Okay, and that is stored. Uh, I when I think I read about it. If you go into the build folder of this uh, of this you know project of this mm -hmm. uh, project, you will find a log there, okay, regarding this, uh, in each build folder, you have a log re regarding that execution. So uh, I'm not sure if they're using persistent objects. I shared a link once in the Gitter channel. Uh, so. Okay, so what you're saying is inside the workspace, and if I go to a workspace, let's choose. Okay, now I'm I'm looking at my own file system now. So, if I go to the Git client plugin folder, can I find the path to that workspace easily? I might be able to. Workspace, workspaces. Here we go. Okay, so. Oh, yes, it was not on this machine. Okay, so that doesn't help me as much. Let's go looking here and see if we can find. So what I think what you're saying is, for instance, if I look in this, come on, give me something. Oh, oh, I know, I know. So continuing this looking, all right, so, and the, the name was it-client, okay. So what you were saying is here's the workspace. No, that's just a workspace. So that doesn't include any historical information. This is exactly one workspace. So would, that's not the right place. Wouldn't it be stored in, you know, the Jenkins, uh, Jenkins root directory or something? It, yeah. it is. It should be stored there in the, I think, in the jobs. And now if we look at... Jenkins plugins folders, jobs, git client. I would expect it to be stored here. So yeah. if we look in git client pipeline GitHub, the, yeah, builds, here we go. 
Uh, no, actually, I think we have to go to, in this case, we have, because it's multi-branch, we have to go to branches first. Okay. And then we go to master. And then in this one, there's a config, a next build number. Let's see. So there's the, con no. Okay. Where is the history stored? Because there definitely is a history. It must exist somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is this folder built once at least? You could check in that, you know, file, build, file. You know, oh, this one definitely numbers. has been built. It's absolutely, okay. it has been built. So, no, not all. Okay, so let's try... There we go. Okay, I think I'm getting closer now. No, well, okay, this gives us one example. It's not a perfect example. No, no. This is, yeah. this is a different thing, so that's not it. Hmm. Okay, continuing. I may have to do some separate investigating, Hushikesh. Okay. Jenkins plugins folder, jobs, um, git client, and let's take that git client pipeline. And then in builds, no. What have we got here? Next build number, indexing, config files. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, I apologize. Okay. I'm not finding it. Okay. So, uh, what, uh, what is the next build number here? Like, it would tell us the next build number, right? It, it does. That's correct. So, it would be so if we look at this one. So that is definitely stored data, and it mm -hmm. it is just stored as a plain file. The configuration of the job is stored in that config.xml file. Mm -hmm. But where is the history? Okay, let's let's take a different approach. We're going to look for. something that has several iterations of oh, three is a poor choice. How about, and even these, I have just recently flushed this system so that, okay, let's just do this then. Here we go. Yes, okay. So I've, I think I've got a place where we can see historical information. It's mm -hmm. in a folder named builds, not jobs and not workspace. So if we go into the folder named builds, For my pipeline, this yeah, is the yeah. job name, yes. get client pipeline, and there is one, oh, one and, and two, right? And yes. each of those contains a change log, a JUnit result, um, the log file from it, and more. So they are storing data as an XML file, like the build XML contains the data, right? I think so. Yeah. So let's let's look at that and see. 
So here it's saying, here are the parameters that were passed. So here are the parameters. Here's what caused it. Here is how long it spent in Q because I was measuring the in time in Q. And here is the pipeline library that was used. And here are the credentials that were used. And here is the build data. So this gives the um, historical information of which SHA-1s were used in this build. And here's some build history. And it looks like a lot of build history. Oh, yes, this is, <laughs> this is, this is, the Git forensics plugin storing its data. So yes, okay. so it, it looks like these things are storing things in this build.xml file. Okay. Now you don't have a build, but I, th <laughs> I would think still there's a way to store um, data. Let's see if we can find other examples of data that's stored for historical. Oh yes, like slow requests. So here they're just stored as text, but something must be writing those and it's not a job, right? Mm -hmm. And then what others, for instance, monitoring and monitoring i think you'd already done the looking to see but monitoring has all sorts of data that it's storing build queue length and these things are even um what is an rrd file i thought that was some form of real time or some form of time series database A reduced resolution data set. No, no. Time series data. Okay, here it is. Good. So RRD tool is handles time series data like network bandwidth, temperature, CPU load. It's a circular, circular buffered database. Okay. Now we don't, I don't think we need a circular buffer mm -hmm. necessarily, right? Although yeah. maybe, I guess the question is, do we need a circular buffer? Oh, uh, I, well, what exactly is a circular buffer? I have uh, no idea. So. Ah, so a, a circular mm -hmm. here, let's, let's bring back that, that page. So what a, a when a time series database um, what it's doing is it's tracking history over time, right? So this yeah, graph yeah. shows from left to right time earlier to time later. And in doing that, we need a way to discard the oldest things and retain the newest things. Okay. And these time series databases using a, a round robin archive. So it remembers a fixed number of things and then discards things off the end as new things arrive. Okay. So assume if my buffer size is only 20, I can store 20. And when I'm storing the 21st, I delete the first one. Exactly. That's that's okay. the kind of thing. And and I wonder, maybe we want something like that here that really we want to use a round robin thing because we don't yes. want to, we don't want to accumulate things forever. Okay. And so maybe, maybe it is something where, but again, that's leading us, that's be leading us back to the monitoring thing as a way to okay how would we how would we store this store. Oh. so so are you do okay we maybe we look for this yeah uh, surely uh, do we do that internally or uh, uh is this rdd rrd thing managed by us or is there uh, how would that work as well i i think it's managed by jenkins i assume it's managed by the jenkins monitoring plugin oh, but okay. let's let's look together and see so Here's this, and does it mention our art? Okay, so it mentions them at least. 
Okay, it already uses RRD graphs. Okay, so so the this monitoring plugin is in fact using RRD. So it may be that if we look at it as an example, and we go slash RRD in this repository, let's see what it knows. Okay, it's mentioned in the README. Where else could it be? So, okay, well, let's see. What if somewhere in this thing, main, Java, in the plugins, Okay, nodes. Okay, so I would assume the listener somehow. Must have a way. Hudson monitoring filters. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's keep looking. So node monitoring action which says do we have monitoring permission i don't see where it's doing the recording of the data though so yeah. maybe uh, that may just be that i'm not looking real well monitoring scripts Oh, that's fun. I had never used this. Wow. Interesting. Okay, so there's, there's something for me to learn. Okay, so, but I don't, it's not immediately clear to me how we do okay so how does this thing write those rrd files and present them oh java melody is that some package being used or something it is that's that's the thing that does this okay. presentation right so oh. so when i if if we to show you how it looks on my system, if I run let's get Jenkins up and running. So if I run this one and I go manage Jenkins monitoring, mm -hmm. monitoring of Jenkins controller, you see these pretty charts up at the top okay. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are coming from Java Melody. Okay. So this one says, hey, I've I had this steadily growing memory usage yesterday because i was heavily abusing this system as it was reset re bringing itself back to life after i threw everything away and then it stabilized okay now the oddity here is yeah and and it's pretty responsive all the time 120 milliseconds that's pretty good But so the the idea then is, but this this is just Java Melody. So this is not anything specific to to Jenkins. And then if I want to go back to Jenkins, I go. Where do how I forget how I return to Jenkins from this UI? I think it's. Yeah. Okay. That at least got me back. So is Java Melody storing it internally or we are using Jenkins to store we that I using right? that I apologize, but I don't know. And so okay. that may be something I have to just uh, task you to put a debugger on and watch it to see, hey, what what happens when I click here? Because this thing definitely mm -hmm. is showing useful information. 
Mm-hmm. Managing. Yeah, that's not. And likewise, this monitoring of Jenkins agents, I believe, shows the same thing. Now, I'm not sure how it's dealing with the fact that I have 40 or more agents. Oh, oh, it gives me one per agent. Like this. Okay. Wow. Now that's fascinating. What is, okay, once again, I've got lots and lots of open things. Why would something be 44 million milliseconds long? Huh. And yeah. I clearly I need I have more to learn here, Rushikesh. I'm I apologize, but I've obviously got more to learn. Because when I looked into the metrics plugin, I I went through the code. I kind I kind of started understanding it, but then I didn't find any way of how it's how they are writing the you know files and then again reading it back. So that was something which I couldn't understand. And, and I think I think it may be that what I need to do is find someone who's expert in that and ask for their help, because okay. I think it makes sense that that we should we should use a similar technique, or at least consider a similar technique to an RRD file, um, as a way to store the information about the about the cache cleanup runs. Right. That that. Yeah. RRD file seems like a, a very sensible thing to say, let's not keep more than a certain number of these and let's rotate them automatically. Makes sense. That would be efficient as well. Like. Right, right. Without us having to then clean up logs or tell people Good. to go delete, truncate the logs themselves. Yeah. So um, how about if I'll plan to take the action to go ask for help? Sure, yeah. And okay. uh, another thing I had was, uh, you know, the uh, would you tell UI? Okay. Uh -huh. uh, is there any way of pay, you know paginate you know pagination already? Like you know this thing that I've seen few plugins having that one two three four down. So is there any way reference you give me so that I can go through that and you know, you know, get started with that as well? Yeah. So let's let's see the alternatives for pagination so there are uh, maybe maybe there let's look at see if there's something in the design library already that would give us a hint um, so what what we're thinking about is how do we present a table okay so here's a table no, that really isn't pagination yet, is it? But in the warnings plugin, I know it has to be doing pagination. So that that may be, uh, well, let's see, let's ask it. Okay, pagination, jelly, pagination in Jenkins. Range notation for pagination. Jelly form controls. Okay, I'm not seeing a mention here. So let's go looking in. Oh, apparently I don't have stapler cloned. So let me go get stapler. Let's get the source code and go see what the source code says. So the source code for the stapler library, I think is in a thing called stapler.
Okay, no mention of pagination there. Um, what would is there another word that might be used to describe pagination? Mm. Oh, oh, okay. Mm. Best six symbol synonyms for pagination. How about page number paginate? Tried that one already. Page number, okay, maybe page number. Nope, okay, so, so I don't, well, so maybe let's try. The warnings plugin certainly has pagination in it. So maybe let's look for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. So Okay. Okay, so what he's describing here is this pagination happens actually client side and is controlled by this show number of entries field. Which would I think trigger something on the server? You know? Yeah, so I, I, well, let's see. So let's- We can look into the jelly file, I guess. Right, right. Let's see. Okay, and see how. Okay, number of issues is subdivided. All right. Yeah, let's let's go look at it and see. So, so let's see what jelly files there are here. So, finding an example. Going back to warnings ng. So let's take this one, this one. Let's look at Maven warnings. Okay, so here are a total of six. And when I click it there, and if I want to show that, all right, so here it mm -hmm. is, and it's in a page called Maven warnings. Mm -hmm. Now that probably means the Maven part is. Yeah, I it didn't find any commit. It's all right. No. Okay, so maybe let's look at this. Oh, here we go. Jelly source. Oh, uh, I thought we could look into the you know warnings plugin itself. No. Oh, oh, right. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sitting in the stapler plugin. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Let's do that. Let's go to warnings in G. Okay, so let's look in the warnings plugin. And here we have Okay, so for instance, is this no? Okay, so how about let's take let's take a a little simpler approach. Where could we find the jelly files? So here, for instance, is charts, open tasks, 
And here is the open tasks. Does this show? Mm. No. The one, oh, oh, here we go. Let's, if we, if I would assume one somewhere in this, we will find one for the Maven warnings, wouldn't you expect? Mm. Yeah. So how about if we look for the word maven in this repository? Or we could, you know, look at some kind of paragraph present in that UI, you know, some text. Some oh, words. right. Very good suggestion. Yeah. So let's, let's go back to the UI. And here, what we see is details or something like that. Yeah. See, the word details for me is... How about thinking that details is probably not, well, what if we look at the page source and see if there's something hiding inside of it? So details, data tables API. No, I'm not seeing what I was hoping for. Something obviously easily searchable. Well, that didn't work for me, Hushikesh. Because this feels like a, a reasonable presentation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it certainly gives you, okay, we've got access to details, easy expand and contract, age of it, and more more information available. Yeah, if, if I have, if I, you know, get to know this, at least I can build a basic UI and then, you know, uh, research on how do I store the data? Well, and I, yeah, I wonder if here again, I've, I feel like the, the data storage thing should be, should be something just weak. Yeah. Hmm. How do we, I apologize that I can't, can't answer that one for you, Rishikesh. Really sorry. Uh, we will figure it out together. I mean, look at this. It, yeah. So. All right. So how do, well, how would you like to approach it further? I'll certainly ask about how to do the data storage. Mm -hmm. And I wonder maybe what we should do is should we ask for consultation with Uli Hoffner uh, on, on the how do we present the data to see if he could give us some, some ideas of more effective ways to present the data based on what he's learned from Warnings plugin. Yeah, I, I think that would be a good idea. Now the, the other side would be okay, we could we could just ask somebody who knows the the monitoring plugin or one like it and maybe we drive it from the data storage side without worrying as much about the presentation. Mm -hmm. So I think right now it's mostly I've got some action items I need to ask tomorrow before I go on vacation to see what I can find for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and next week, when would you be back again? Like... I'll be back. I return probably next Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we, we leave on Monday and we're mm -hmm. there through at least Friday. And so Saturday, I may be back for sure. I'll be back home by Sunday, the 21st. Okay. So I wonder, should we, should we bring this? Maybe what we should just do is bring this to the developer mailing list and say, Hey, let's, let's ask the question there. Look, Mark's, 
Mark doesn't know how to do this. Help us. Mm-hmm. And, and, and let people say, okay, hey, how do we do it? Because they may be able to help us better than, than me trying to find a specific person by asking the question more generally. Uh, oh, here, uh, one request from my side. I think it would be better if you put the, you know, right. question first. Right, and in fact, way, I think yeah. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it now. If you're okay with me asking yeah. it while we're here, that way, I'm going to start the question, and you and I can phrase it together. That way, we make sure it gets done. Uh, yeah, because assume if I put it in some words which are, you know, someone doesn't understand it. Then well, well, and just the matter of of. People, people know me and they're willing to tell me, Mark, you've asked a very dumb question. Just do this and be done with it, right? And, and, and that's great. Whereas for you, they may have to be much more gentle and say, oh, well, Hushikesh, have you tried this and tried that? All right, so data s- storing. Uh, the, okay, here, so here I am trying. To, can you see my screen okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so storing the... Uh, maintenance data for Git caches. Maintenance results. Mm-hmm. Uh, so storing the results for Git cache maintenance yes. tasks. All right. So Rusha cache. Rusha cache. Rusha. Cash Rao has been implementing the Git Cash maintenance um, project in Google Summer of Code. We have working a working demo in the in pull requests to the Git client plugin and Git plugin. Uh, Rushikesh would like to would like to present results to show the administrator the results of the most recent maintenance tasks. In order to do that, it needs to store those results on the Jenkins controller. It needs to um, keep a fixed number of those, um, some form of time series, question mark, and needs to present them to the user in a comfortable user interface. Uh, Those are all areas that are outside of my skills. Can others offer suggestions of existing implementations that Rushikesh could use, could could consult to see effective and reasonable ways to store the store a yeah, a set of store the most recent results of a task and present the most recent results of a task of tasks to the administrator. What do you think? Is that stated well enough? Yeah, that was taken well enough. Great. All right. So so here we go. We're going to post 
off we go. Now, I, I don't promise that we'll get an immediate response, but if we don't get a response, we can certainly ask more questions or you can reply to it when people say, what did you mean by this? What did you mean by that? How can I find your code, et cetera? Yeah. All right. What else, Rushikesh? Mm, the, those were the only things which you know I have to uh, I wanted to discuss. Uh, right. There are there are a few more tests which I have to write. Uh, you know there are a few failing tests again. Uh, one two I'll I'll fix them. That's not nothing from small failing small spot bug issues and all. So I'll fix those and a uh, few parts of the oh uh, yeah there was one thing regarding the hash hash set as okay we are adding caches into the hash set but uh, whenever we delete a uh, you know repository we didn't add any logic to delete or uh, you know the cache from the hash set the mm -hmm. the caches would be deleted if you restart the jenkins uh you know software completely because we are using a static hash set okay and a static initialization block so during that time we would read all the caches and then assume if you delete anything there's nothing which is there's no way of deleting it from the hash set and i'm not aware of anything that actively attempts to delete caches on the jenkins controller so i think that's a safe assumption what what oh. the technique you're using seems safe to me now now i may be wrong and someone with an enormous controller may say oh you should have but enormous controllers have all sorts of other things that are using much more memory than this little bit of cache management. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, that's it. That's it from my, yeah. All right. Thanks, Rushikesh. I'll try to get the copy of the video uploaded within the next 24 to 48 hours. If not, there's a danger it may not be uploaded until until I get back. Uh, I think the last recording, I'm not sure was that uploaded or not. So uh, I'll check. I'll I'll okay. have to double check to be sure. Thanks. Yeah. I'll check. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, that's it. Okay. Thanks very much. Have a great day and you too. good luck writing tests, etc. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Bye. -bye.